In most fields, especially in Europe, the word engineer is legally protected and you need to be accredited by a formal institution to call yourself one. It implies competence, a scientific background, an understanding of how to reason clearly and the ability to write arguments that are logically sound or cogent. Meanwhile, in audio land, any idiot who can click the shiny red button in a DAW now calls themselves an engineer. An audio engineer, a recording engineer, a mastering engineer. Now suddenly, their rambling incoherent comments online receive the same weight as if they were a civil engineer or an aerospace engineer. Part of the reason for this is that most degrees in the audio industry are actually BAs, which mean Bachelors of Arts and not science, engineering, medicine, or anything with actual academic force, arts degrees place more emphasis on your feelings, teaching you useless nonsense while you don't turn up for lectures because you're too busy partying for three years. But that's all good, because the university is getting paid by your government-guaranteed student finance that you'll never earn back, and that's all that matters. Arts degrees include studying fashion, theatre, drama, interior design, and generally the stuff that you don't actually need a degree for because in those industries, it's all about who you know and not what you know. And the universities teach you a bunch of useless nonsense anyway. Audio engineers used to be pulled from rigorous, highly academic science and engineering fields back in the 1950s, where a small amount of people were highly qualified experts. But nowadays, everyone's an expert. So one person who calls himself an engineer but actually isn't, doesn't have the skill set required to spot bullshit and logical fallacies from another so-called engineer. And I'm all for power to the people, but this isn't the kind of democratization which is actually healthy. When I make a video, what am I trying to do? Most of the time, I'll attempt to argue for something. I have some kind of conclusion that I want to persuade you of and a bunch of reasons that support that conclusion. Then, if you think I've made a compelling case, then you might agree with me in the comments, perhaps take the advice I'm arguing for in the video. But if you think I've argued poorly for whatever that is, you get to decide how you respond. But most of the time, you're going to want to correct me if you're polite in the comments. Or if not, you want to destroy my video, or expose me as a fraud or a liar or a charlatan or whatever you want to do. But I actually think that is great and I fully encourage it. Contrary to low-tier forum trolls who just make stuff up about me or don't understand how YouTube works, I don't delete comments. I'm actually dedicated to the protection of your right to make an idiot of yourself online. But if I make a mistake in one of my videos, I absolutely want you guys to call me out for it. So, on YouTube, I'm in the business of creating compelling arguments. And people who want to disagree with me should, at least, be engaged in the activity of creating counter-arguments. But this is exactly the problem. Because of the deliberate structural deficiencies of our educational institutions, my trolls and haters unfortunately are a bunch of blithering idiots who don't actually know what the definition of an argument is. And to be honest, I'm starting to feel sorry for the poor trolls. I want people to be able to disagree with me in ways which are actually compelling, so that when my haters hate on me, their comments at least look as though they were written by someone with a non-zero IQ, rather than the rambling, illogical mess which they currently tend to be. But this video isn't just teaching my haters how to write better hate comments, because I'm about to teach you the secret skill that's seemingly been hidden from our industry, how to spot bullshit and form coherent arguments. So let's start with some examples. This hate comment on Reddit from a user who has since been banned from the platform was found so compelling by the Reddit folk, it has by far the most upvotes. And I can see that it contains some kind of vague hate directed towards me, but does it constitute a logically valid or cogent argument of any kind? Now, I could formalize it manually into propositional logic and see if it's valid, but why would I waste my time manually reading digital vomit from Reddit when I can just put it into AI and get it to do it for me? So it's not valid, it's not sound, it's not cogent, its conclusion is not reached. This person tried to make an argument, but quite literally failed by definition to argue for anything compellingly. He wrote words, but if you want to read words that have no logical structure, you can just go over to monkey type and at least you will improve your typing speed in the process. 
Anyone who finds an unsound, invalid, non-cogent argument compelling is demonstrating they have the logical reasoning skills of a pigeon, yet this is the most upvoted comment in that thread. And I'm hoping you now get what I mean, that the audio industry has some kind of problem when it comes to logical argumentation and spotting bullshit. All of the civil engineers, electrical engineers, industrial engineers, all of the real engineers understand logic because they're trained in it. But us audio engineers don't. This must be fixed. This comment starts with, I'm a mastering engineer. Well, he's an engineer. I guess he should be able to make a cogent argument then. Now you might be thinking, well, maybe that's just unfair what I'm asking the AI because these people are just writing normal text and not formal logic. Okay, well, let me write something like a normal YouTube comment and ask Jippity if it's logically valid and sound and see what it says. This dude says that in his video, MS Paint is a DAW. Well, that isn't the case. A DAW is something which could be called audio at least. MS Paint can't be called audio. So it's not possible that MS Paint is a DAW, so the dude is incorrect. And Jippity says that it's deductively valid and sound. Now, it's not actually hard to write a valid argument. The problem is, most people wouldn't know a valid argument if it slapped them in the face. And most people don't even know what valid means. The brutal truth is, if you're calling yourself an engineer, and you don't know what logical validity, soundness, cogency is, that's a problem. So for the first time in the history of audio YouTube, I'm going to give you academia's secret weapon, the tool that sorts the real engineers from the pretenders, how to generate an actual argument for something. Let's start with the basics, because most people don't even know what an argument is. An argument is a series of premises which logically lead to a conclusion, and without a clear conclusion, you literally have no argument. Without premises, you're just making an assertion or an opinion which is super weak and can be dismissed with various expressions including but not limited to opinions are like arseholes, everyone has one. The longer and less structured your comment is, the more likely it's going to be dismissed as a bunch of incoherent bullshit ranting. So let's do this together. First, write the thing you want to say. In this case, Streaky annoyed me in saying that this stupid EQ move works every time. This little EQ tip is going to make every single mix you do sound amazing every single time. Stay concisely in one sentence what you want to actually say here. What is it that you want to get out and disagree with? This is our conclusion. But a conclusion just in isolation on its own isn't an argument. That's just a statement. We need to support that with some kind of premises to get there. So we need to write some premises. And if you find yourself writing premises from which your conclusion does not logically follow, you are just rambling and not making a proper argument. So just delete that. And if your premises are just untrue, delete them. It's better to be concise and potent than weak and rambly. So the first thing we wrote is our conclusion, because that's the most important thing. That's what we're actually trying to get to, what we think of the video, what we want to conclude with. And then we've written some premises below that. Well, the conclusion actually follows the premises. So we will cut and paste our conclusion below the premises we just wrote and then see if those premises logically kind of get to our conclusion. Does it flow? Does it, if we say, cats come in many colors, I like bread, therefore Streaky's video is dumb, then our conclusion doesn't follow. We need to make sure that everything follows. After we do that, we can check it with AI if we want to. And we can see here that Jippity says that it's a valid and sound argument. But if we read it, it kind of feels a bit too short. I say that there's counterexamples, but I don't give any counterexamples. So obviously it will be way more compelling just to give some counterexamples. So we can edit that and put in some counterexamples. So now I don't have a rambly comment, but rather a concise, deductively valid argument giving counterexamples that is potent. Write comments like that, not long rambly nonsense that doesn't go anywhere and says a billion things. It's better just to have one point, do it well, potent, bang, done. Much better comments. But you might have started thinking, wait, you keep saying deductively valid, sound, cogent, all of these things. What's the difference? Don't all of those things just mean that it's persuasive? No, not at all. A valid argument is talking about the structure. 
specifically, if all of the premises were true, then the conclusion would be guaranteed. But it doesn't actually matter if the premises or conclusion are actually true. I could say, for example, if unicorns exist, my dolphin is a wizard. Unicorns do exist, therefore my dolphin is a wizard. So that is completely logically valid. It's a logically valid argument, but of course, it's not true. So when people say, yeah, this guy does have a valid argument, they're inadvertently saying he might be wrong about everything. <laughs> so if you want to say that his argument is valid and the premises also are true and the conclusion is true, then you say that the argument is sound. But for the small amount of people who do actually know the definition of valid and sound, many people don't actually know that validity can't refer to stuff which is probabilistic. It needs to be absolute. So for example, if I said 99% of people who buy AP Mastering courses actually learn legit stuff, Bob bought an AP Mastering course, therefore Bob will learn legit stuff. This is not a valid argument and it can't be sound either. Why? Because there's a 1% chance that Bob won't learn legit stuff. So maybe he doesn't bother watching the course or after he buys it. So making a leap from something probabilistic to something that is absolutely the case is logically invalid. And it's also called a hasty generalization sometimes. So, and this is exactly the same reason as why it's the theory of evolution and not the theorem of evolution. And some people say, well, it's not called the theorem of evolution because it hasn't been proven enough yet or something like that. No, that's just a demonstration of a misunderstanding of the terms. Something is only ever a theorem if it's deductively valid. So if there's some kind of mathematical proof or something, but because the theory of evolution relies on data collection from observations like digging up bones and stuff, it can never be called a theorem because that's just a misuse of the word. It's not deductively valid. It's observational, this is probabilistic, even if it's 99.9999% uh, likely to be true, it, it's not It's not absolute because it relies on observations and we could have been trolled by God or whatever, that's like one of the arguments <laughs> thrown around. Dinosaur fossils? God put those here to test our faith. <laughs> Most scientific studies, especially those in the world of audio, are empirical investigations, observing stuff in the world and trying to find out what is most likely the case. Most of this stuff is inductive rather than deductive, which is why arguments most common in the scientific community are trying to be cogent rather than sound. Almost all of the best medical studies make cogent but not logically valid central arguments. To make a cogent argument, you still have to have premises in the conclusion and a coherent structure to tie it together, and the premises need to be persuasive in isolation and support the conclusion. But the conclusion never is X is true. But it's always there is good evidence that X is true, for example. And most YouTube comments take the form of bits and bobs kind of make sense when you're reading it and you kind of agree with it, but there's no real clear conclusion. It doesn't really form a coherent structure or argument. And it just comes off as an incoherent mess that doesn't really argue for anything specifically and just serves as digital spam taking up space in a server rack at Google. Now, obviously, you don't need to be so OCD about everything that you write in a YouTube comment. I'm just making the point to illustrate the large gap between academic level writing and what is the norm in the audio industry. But with the advent of AI, there's no reason to write a bunch of incoherent nonsense anymore. You can just get AI to fix it for you. So with some magic commands, Yo, dude, you is proper stupid, bro, cause fancy speaker cables don't sound better, bro. There is no study that say that you get me, my mate uses lamp cord and it sounds proper good in it. You couldn't pass a blind test, never. And so you dumb. Claims about audible improvement are only justified if reliable control tests show an audible difference. Reliable control tests have not shown an audible difference between expensive speaker cables and ordinary well-made speaker cables. Therefore, claims that expensive speaker cables sound better are not justified. Boom. Troll slop in. Classic syllogism out. Did you ever notice how writing from actual engineers is usually not full of personal insults and lying about what their colleagues have said? That's because doing that makes your argument look fallacious and weak and degrades your personal reputation. 
When you read something written by an actual engineer, you'll probably not spot any logical fallacies in there. But when it's written by an audio engineer, you best be prepared because it's going to have fallacies in there left, right and centre. So get your bingo cards out. Let's see how many fallacies we can spot in this Reddit hate thread. The classic one, ad hominem attack. This is called well poisoning when you start off by framing someone in a bad light before actually giving any argumentation or evidence. This is an appeal to motive fallacy, saying that what I'm saying must be false because I benefit from it financially. This here is a classic straw man fallacy, arguing against something I didn't even say. In fact, in the video he's referring to, I managed to identify all of the MP3 versions. This is a classic appeal to ridicule, laughing at something, saying it's ridiculous without actually saying why it's bad or giving any evidence for why it would be bad. This is a hasty generalization fallacy. This is a red herring fallacy. This is a slippery slope fallacy. This here is a super classic no true Scotsman's fallacy. Classic false dichotomy. This is a genetic fallacy, saying that because I do things he doesn't like, other things that I say are wrong. He doesn't really have a point here because I'm extremely transparent with sponsorships. Two quo quay fallacy, guilt by association fallacy, trying to say because my videos come across in a similar delivery style as to other people who are scammers, I must also myself be a scammer. Appeal to popularity fallacy. This is burden of proof reversal. This is a particularly dumb single cause fallacy and just demonstrates he's clueless about the genre. Okay, so maybe this video was a bit of a curveball for an audio channel, but I am your favorite sponsored unboxing YouTube show. So don't forget to click on all of my affiliate links on your way out.